I find it really hard to resist the temptation every time I open one of these to say, release the crackle. Did I save this up for a month or so just so that I could do that joke for a cold open on the video? Maybe. Greetings, one and all, and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. By the way, I invite you to hit that subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up if you like what you see. Share this video with your friends and leave me your thoughts down in the comment section. I'd really, really appreciate it. No, really, I would. So yes, one more video with my uh, amputee glasses here, and uh, hopefully by the next video you see, I will have my brand new specs. So yes, uh, you won't want to miss that one. Tune in for the grand reveal. Anyway, uh, yes, today is going to be a haul video. Actually, a, a hall of halls. Hall of Fame? Hall in one? I don't, know. I don't have any uh, grain, whole grains with me, so it's not hall and oats. Anyway, uh, yes, I've got four different halls from four different sources, obviously. A uh, little bit of a story behind each hall, and I decided to do them in uh, multiples of seven. Uh, some of these I kind of um, took stuff out to make it seven, but... Uh, some of these, and some of these, especially the first one, was actually seven naturally, a natural seven. Uh, and the fourth hull, the, the biggest one, is actually a multiple of seven. So, uh, yes, I just, I'm kind of, I'm not necessarily superstitious. You know, seven is supposedly a lucky number, but I'm not like superstitious or into numerology or anything. So, but I just decided to go with seven just kind of as, as a uniform thing. I don't know. I don't know why. Anyway. Uh, this first haul I'm going to do for you. Yeah, this, let, let's just stop being awkward and get right into the uh, hauls. This is what you came here for, right? Uh, the first haul here is, um, it's very rare with my kind of weird musical tastes. It's exceedingly rare that I will find even two CDs by the same seller, on, uh, being sold by the same seller on Discogs or eBay. You know, sometimes I'll buy a lot on eBay, but it's got some stuff that I didn't really care about. But uh, yes, it's extremely rare that I would find seven CDs being sold by the same Discog seller that I actually have wanted for a while or just decided, hey, since it's here, uh, I, I kind of want it. You know, I've already wanted it anyway. You know, all seven of these I have wanted in some capacity. And he just happened to sell to be selling all seven of these. And uh, to top it off, they were at great prices. I don't think I paid more than $3 for any one of these CDs. And uh, they were all in fantastic condition as well. So, uh, yes, it's just a, an excellent... Uh, I figured it was meant to be if he's got seven CDs. I, he probably had more, I think. But I just decided to cap it at seven. It's all the stuff that I really wanted. And uh, anyway, these first two actually might have gone with a, a video last month if I had uh, not been lazy and thought about doing a Pride Month video. But I just didn't get around to it. Uh, first of all, we have the best of the nylons. This is a Canadian acapella group. They started out with all their members being gay men, but uh, since then they have uh, adopted a philosophy of diversity and uh, brought in, uh, you know, members of, you know, cycled in members of different orientations. So they are, you know, just not just a, uh, a gay band, a gay vocal group. Uh, anymore. But yes, they do. Uh, they put out six or seven albums. This is obviously a compilation. And they do a lot of, uh, you know, covers of classic pop songs. Um, the Lion Sleeps Tonight. I uh, cannot remember who did that. Uh, Poison Ivy. That one That one was done by, I think, the Coasters or something. Um, uh, Drift Away, the Dobie Gray hit. Happy Together by the Turtles. And uh, so, yeah, lots of fun, f just fun classic songs. I think they do a couple of orig originals as well. But uh, yeah, I decided I had to pick that up because I liked... Uh, I have one or two of their albums uh, on vinyl. So uh, yeah, just pick up a compilation. Why not? And this one, this actually one was new and sealed, and I had another copy of it, but it was kind of in shabby condition. Uh, it's called Can't Help Loving That Man, and it is part of the Sony Music uh, Art Deco series, as you can see. But uh, the, the theme on this one is <clears throat> songs about, you know, ostensibly about women loving men, but the songs are actually sung by men. So it just kind of adds a little layer of meaning. And for some reason, they didn't necessarily cause a lot of controversy back then. 
I don't know if it was, I don't know if that throws back to, you know, back in Roman times or whatever, back in theater or, you know, what, uh, Elizabethan times or whatever. Um, the, o- the only actors that were on stage were men. So men would commonly play women's parts um, or women's roles, I guess I should, should say. <laughs> parts kind of su- suggest something else. But anyway, uh, so I don't know if that kind of is, this is kind of a holdover from that. I don't know. But uh it was just too interesting a concept to pass up. This is, yeah, mostly songs from the 20s and 30s, it says. But yes, uh, track two on here is Masculine Women, Feminine Men. So, you know, just too intriguing. Oh, one song on here is He's So Unusual. I don't know if that... I wonder if Cindy Lauper could have covered that in another uh, time continuum or something. Anyway, just, just too interesting a concept to pass up. I had to uh, give that one a go. And... <clears throat> along with all the other ones he had, he had a John Williams soundtrack that I did not have yet, the soundtrack from JFK. I had to add that one to my ever-growing John Williams collection. Now here is a boy band. Oh, I kept forgetting to show I keep forgetting to show you the backs of these CDs. So there's that one. You can pause if you want to. And there's that one. So that's where I read the text. And JFK, yeah. Good luck reading the track listing on that one. They could have done a little bit better job with the uh, design of the uh, cover. Anyway, on to this one here. Uh, this is a boy band that uh, was, well, they weren't really popular. They were like a third level, a third tier um, in terms of success boy band. This is their sophomore album, Down for the Get Down. This is a al- uh, boy, boy band called Youngstown. And... Uh, very much uh, not really hip hop. Maybe the instrumentation is slightly reminiscent of a hip hop. I don't think they had any actual rap in the in the lyrics, in the lyrical delivery or not. But yeah, very very much dancey, upbeat, um, rhythmic, you know, R and B type of boy band pop. Had that one a long time ago and really enjoyed it. Got rid of it, and this is the case with uh, actually this one and the next three. I had them. I used to have them. Got rid of them. I don't know why. I'm asking myself now, why did you get rid of those? And I can't come up with a good answer. But anyway, that's, that one's it's got a lot of fun songs on it, i got to say. And then uh, these next two, I have sticky notes on them to denote that I have already listened to them and I'm ready to log them into my Discogs inventory. Uh, just because it's I've, these, these have been sitting here for this long, like four, you know, a month or so. I've been waiting to do this video for that long, so. A little behind the scenes of my uh, organizational stuff. Anyway, this guy, I got two CDs from this guy, and uh, he is a violinist, and he worked with, I meant to make notes and keep them here, I want to say Jefferson Starship. He worked with Jefferson Starship, I think. Jerry Goodman. Uh, he is a violinist, and on these two albums from the private music label, his instrument of choice was electric violin which is something a little unusual. So yes, On the Future of Aviation is the uh, his solo debut album. And yes, just six songs. Uh, but so, I mean, most of these run like six, seven minutes long. So it's pretty much the length of a full album. Uh, and his sophomore album, Ariel, equally as good. He does uh, interesting time signatures on a lot of his songs. So uh, yes, lots of stuff. And... Uh, uh, let's see, what's the one that I really, really enjoy? Uh, Sarah's Lullaby. That is the the final closing track on, on the Future of Aviation. Sarah's, <clears throat> Sarah's Lullaby is really, really good. And it's it's in a way, it's kind of a suite. It starts out really uh, fairly quiet, and it goes into a uh, more up-tempo, up-tempo <clears throat> second part. So it's really good. So anyway, yeah. I was very happy to get these back into my collection. I had missed them more than I realized. And then the final one in this first haul uh, is a group called Karis Flowers. Now, if this guy and this guy look kind of familiar, it helps if I line it up with the camera, uh, if you're one thinking to yourself, hmm, this guy looks a little bit like Adam Levine, uh, that's because he is. This group, Karis Flowers, was basically the immediate progenitor to Maroon 5. And uh, yes, these guys, this... Uh, don't know how to describe 
this this isn't it isn't really emo it's more power pop i guess than uh, maroon 5 uh, this album is closest to or excuse me maroon 5's debut songs about jane is that what it's called uh, is the closest to uh this album Karis flowers uh the fourth world uh in in terms of sound uh the the sound of the, of the music and this was the only only album that Karis flowers put out before they uh morphed into maroon 5 excellent album and yes i had it all those years those years ago got rid of it uh because i was stupid uh and yes um yeah myself is a really really good song uh oliver is really uh is fun let's see uh soap disco is pretty good and so yeah very enjoyable album and uh that's kind of one reason why i kind of got into maroon 5 was because i realized that uh, maroon 5 was these guys and i'd had this album and for some reason i held on to maroon 5 songs about jane i've had it ever since for some reason i got rid of that one i don't know why anyway <clears throat> on to the second haul which is from barnes and noble uh now uh, I walked into Barnes & Noble, was going to get a couple of CDs, and I saw this sign posted on the CD section. Uh, all CDs, 30% off. So I thought, well, hey, I might as well, you know, if I find anything else, I might as well, you know, load up on stuff since it's 30% off. Uh, and again, kind of like with, um, you know, trying to find a, a bunch of stuff from any one Discog seller, the, Barnes and, the CD section at Barnes & Noble has shrunk so much lately that it's kind of rare that I find more than, you know, more than one or two things I'm looking for, or well, sometimes anything that I'm looking for, really. But yes, I found quite a bit here. I found seven CDs, and so I just decided to. Uh, and the funny thing is, the sale had actually ended. Uh, this when I went in, when I went in there, it was a Monday. The sale had actually ended Sunday. No, I went in there on Wednesday, and the sale had actually ended Sunday, but they just forgot to take the signs down. But the manager went over, saw that the signs were still up, and she gave me the 30% discount anyway. Of course, I figure if you're so lazy that you haven't taken your signs down for three days, the customers deserve the discounts. Anyway, uh, first one I got here was uh, Dance Macabre by Duran Duran. I had seen this one come out last fall, uh, and I am a huge Duran Duran fan, one of my all-time favorite bands. And for some reason, I just never picked this up probably because I knew it was uh, a fair portion of it was reworkings of classic songs. And I just kind of was kind of meh on that. And it's decided it was one of those that I decided I'll pick up at some point. Eventually didn't pick up until eight months later. So uh, lots of fun, this one uh, more fun than I thought it was going to be. So yes, uh, very, very good stuff. It kind of has a loose Halloween theme, I guess you'd say just kind of the, the instrumentation, the, the, the sonic mood of it. Is kind of geared toward uh, Halloween. Some good songs on it too. Yeah. And then I decided um, I kind of had the itch to pick these guys up. Um, I think I'd had their CDs before, um, and of course, you know, this is one of these bands that perpetually you hear their songs on the radio now and then. And I just kept hearing their songs, and I thought, okay, they actually had them both of these CDs there at Barnes and Noble. Obviously, since I'm showing them in my hall, so I picked them up. Uh, Lincoln, Lincoln Park, uh, Hybrid Theory, and Meteora. The, these are the the standard original versions of the albums. I saw that they had the uh, the anniversary editions. They actually had both of the anniversary editions there at Barnes and Noble, but it was a little bit more money than I'd wanted to spend. I was already spending a little bit, splurging a little bit, so I decided to not do those. But uh, yeah, was kind of happy to uh, have gotten those. So. Show the back covers, but you guys have already seen. You guys have seen the back covers for these. You know, nothing uh, really particularly uh, amazing about the back covers. Good design on the back covers, I'll say that. But you know, and uh, this next group, <clears throat> this is a group that uh, has uh, put out a new album this year, and I tried out their first album back when it came out. Didn't care much for it, uh, probably because, and this is a stupid reason, because uh, one of the guys in the band is an actor, or, or at least uh, gained his initial fame as an actor. And for some reason, I don't know if it's a, ge a generational thing, but, you know, actors who are trying to be singers just kind of, I, I kind of looked at, look at them with skepticism. I shouldn't. 
because there are plenty of them out there and that, you know, are excellent singers that are also actors. I've got a couple examples right here. You know, not just these guys, but the one or two more coming up here. Uh, and we're talking about Wallows. Uh, yes, I picked up their new album. And I also decided to go ahead and, since they were part of the sale, go ahead and pick up their first album. Ah, uh, Nothing Happens. Uh, don't care for the front cover of that one. It's kind of, just kind of weird. And uh, their sophomore album, Tell Me That It's Over. So, yes, and it turns out I have uh, gained a newfound appreciation for Wallows. They do have uh, uh, something of an 80s sound. 80s mixed with... Um, Contemporary uh, uh, indie rock, I guess you'd say. But uh, yeah, good stuff. I've uh, kind of, uh, I've changed my opinion on uh, Wallows. They're a very good band, I've got to say. And yes, you might be seeing their latest album in my uh, uh, year-end list. Uh, now this CD I mentioned in my last video, my uh, um, midway point of the year favorite albums thing, whatever. Uh, Declan McKenna, uh, What Happened to the Beach. Uh, very good stuff. The most unusual of his albums so far, unusual sounding of his albums so far, uh, has a bit of a Beck sound to it. Uh, Beck from his, like, Odelay era. That's, at least that's how it comes off to me. Kind of that lo-fi stuff. Interesting. It's it's definitely good. I, I can tell it's going to grow on me. I've got to listen to it a couple more times. And then... Uh, Actually, here, you know, I was saying just a minute, talking just a minute ago about uh, actors turned singers. Uh, Kate, Hus Kate Hudson, her new album, her, her debut album, which is called Glorious. And I uh, don't know if I'd say it's glorious. It's definitely very, very, very good. Uh, she's got a fantastic voice. Um, Almost Famous is one of my favorite movies of all time. She was, of course, uh, she played Penny Lane in Almost Famous. Uh, yes, excellent album, I've got to say. Very, very good. Uh, go definitely check it out if you have not yet. So, uh, yes. Did I show the back cover? I don't know if I showed the back cover or not. But uh, Good stuff. And so, yes, that was my Barnes & Noble haul. I'm going to take a quick drink of water here. Talking a lot dries out my voice. <clears throat> now, this next haul... It isn't really a single haul. I've kind of doctored this one. Um, all these CDs come from the same place, though. So uh, in a way, it's it's a it's a legitimate haul, but it's from a couple of different purchases. Um, this guy, I think I mentioned before in my uh, soundtrack, my John Williams videos, a guy named Lucas Kendall. He, uh, for a long time, he was a producer of soundtrack reissues, had his own record label, his own... Uh, magazine, which I think is still exists in an online-only format, Film Score Monthly, it's called. Uh, anyway, he's been doing uh, running a lot of uh, some CD sales recently, the last year or so, um, and he, <laughs> the sales were getting so big that he kind of had to rush to put in, to uh, put together a, an e-commerce site. It's called fsmcds.com. Check it out. Uh, if you like, if you're a Film Score buff and you like getting soundtracks at uh, bargain basement prices, uh, check it out. Uh, it's a legitimate site. It looks a little bit clunky. Trust me, it's legitimate. Uh, I trust the guy. I've known, I've known him in different capacity for years, in, in, you know, to varying uh, degrees for years, off and on. That's what I'm trying to say. But yes, these were all CDs that I bought from uh, various uh, purchases from S FSM CDs. First one we have is A Little Romance. And that's exactly what the movie was, was a little romance. It was a French-American movie. <clears throat> uh, was it Jodie Foster? I think was the, the female lead. She was like 14 years old in this movie. Very, very cute movie. Uh, she falls in love with a French boy, and they go off on this little adventure together. It was a very cute movie. Uh, the score is by Georges Delarue. And uh, I actually bought it on vinyl uh, from House of Records a couple of years ago. And... Uh, it was soon after I saw the movie, so it's kind of an interesting coincidence. So, uh, yeah. Cute movie, very charming little score. Uh, really uh, nice to have that one. And then another kind of a, a grail. I had this one a long, long time ago. Again, got rid of it when I lost interest in soundtracks. I had to have it back. Uh, this is Supergirl, the score from the movie, uh, the 1984 movie. Uh, music by Jerry Goldsmith. 
Uh, yes, uh, Helen Slater, the brother of actor Christian Slater, Helen Slater played Supergirl. Uh, yeah, the movie was eh, kind of clunky, but uh, the music was excellent. And uh, Jerry Goldsmith actually was originally going to score the, the first Superman movie, but he had to, the scheduling conflicts uh, pushed him out and uh, brought jo uh, John Williams in. So the theme from Supergirl is what might have been the theme from the original Superman movie. So kind of interesting. And then we have, uh, this is actually a compilation uh, in a series called Great Composers. I have the John Williams volume of this, and uh, this is obviously the Georges Delarue volume, and it has a selection from A Little Romance on here. And interesting, unlike the John Williams volume, which was just one disc, this one is actually two discs. So, uh, and yeah, this one, he, he only wanted like $12 for it. It was an excellent shape. So yeah, wanted to decide to pick that one up. And this one is, uh, this is actually a re-recording of a, uh, a classic score from the original, The Adventures of Robin Hood, uh, Eric Wolfgang, Wolfgang Korngold's a score from the 1930s epic starring er Errol Flynn. Uh, this is a re-recording with the Utah Symphony Orchestra. Fantastic, classic, classic film score. And then we've got a couple of the much more recent films. We've got Terminator, Terminator 2 by Brad Fidel. I don't know if it's Fidel or Fidel. I can't re remember. But uh, And again, this one, as well as RoboCop 2, I used to have way back in the day. And uh, yes, I, I obviously did not think twice enough, if that's the way to say it, uh, when I was purging CDs back in the day. So, yeah. And then the last volume in this uh, this little hall, uh, this is another compilation. This is it's called "Composed by," and it is put out on the uh, Rhino label. This is from uh, in con in conjunction with Turner Classic Movies, a bunch of classic um, excerpts from classic film scores. You can see the list here. Uh, very impressive lineup. Pretty much all of the very very classic. Um, movie themes of the golden age of cinema, the 30s, 40s, 50s. Uh, if you want a primer on classic film scores, that's the way to go with that. So, yes, and I've gotten a few other great scores, scores in both senses of the word, from those FSM CDs sales that I will be showing you in an update video coming very, very soon. Spoiler alert. Actually, I guess that's not a spoiler alert since I didn't actually spoiler spoil anything specifically. So anyway, the last the last haul is actually 21 CDs. So I'm going to go through it a little quick. I've already been running for rambling on for about 20 minutes. Um, and these this was from a latest my latest thrift store crawl about a month ago. Uh, so let's just go ahead and fire through these real quick. Um, yes, Carpenters. There, this is I believe their sophomore album, Close to You. It has the title track as well as, uh, oh, what's the other one? Oh, we've only just begun. It's like their two signature songs are on the CD. I had to have it uh, at only 99 cents. You know, how can you go wrong with thrift stores? And then a few, uh, not just a few jazz CDs, but a few female jazz artists here. <clears throat> I've got not one, but two albums by Mindy Abair. You might recall that um, I think I first discovered her in a Bargain Bag CD last year. She is a female jazz saxophonist, uh, extremely talented, lots of great stuff on her albums. Oh, and this one has, is it this one? Oh, it has Save the Last Dance, which is a favorite song of mine, but... Uh, I can't remember. on one of these CDs. Oh, it's, it's the next one. Sorry. Uh, and this is the other Mindy Abair CD that I have. I think this was her debut album. Can't remember if one of these was her debut album, but uh, yes, this one, this one is called stars. And uh, yeah, she's, she's, she's fantastic. I've uh, really come to enjoy her. I've got four of her albums now. Uh, thanks to just discovering her by happenstance through my bargain bag feature. So, and then this other one is um, the sophomore album by Candy Dulfer, Saxagogo. And yes, it's this one that I was um, I, I was saying there was a song on here that I really enjoyed. Um, Pick Up the Pieces, the uh, average white band 
instrumental classic. Uh, she covers that one on here. It's, it's a great rendition of it. And uh, she also does uh, I Can't Make You Love Me, the Bonnie Raitt song. So, yes. Um, and yes, on her first album, I can't remember the name of the song, but she had a big, big hit uh, that was a duet with Dave Stewart from the Eurythmics. It was kind of a call and response thing between his guitar and her saxophone. It was a big, big instrumental hit back in the 90s. Uh, so yeah, she did. She did. that was on her first album. So lots of great talent. Uh, yes, I, I didn't even realize how much talent there is in female uh, jazz instrumentalists out there. Just you never know. And uh, this one, I've got a few albums of his. I think he was a discovery that I found by way of my sister's CD collection, Brian Culbertson. Uh, this is his album, uh, Something About Love. This is the fourth or fifth Brian Culbertson album that I have now. Great stuff. Uh, yeah. It's just your, your typical uh, smooth, smooth jazz or uh, uh, contemporary jazz. Good stuff. And then uh, the third third or fourth album that I have by a, an Oregonian artist. I didn't, didn't realize he was Oregonian until after I found out about him. Tom Grant. Uh, this is his album, Tune It In. And this is from 2000? Yeah, 2000. On the Wyndham Hill label. Uh, yes. Just a great uh, ja uh, jazz pianist. Uh, lots and lots of fun with that one. Did this one have a, f a song on here? Uh, oh, Save the Best for Last. I think this that was a... Uh, was that an Anita Baker song? I can't remember. Anyway, an, a classic R&B song was... Uh, had that name, at least. Uh, then we have the best of Lee Rittenauer. He is another jazz uh, guitarist that I've enjoyed uh, recent, uh, very much over the years. Lots of good stuff. Um, uh, this was from his um, Sony label albums, which I believe were the uh, albums in the early part of his career uh, when he was first starting out. So, yeah. Lots of good stuff on there. And then this one I was really, really happy to pick up. Uh, Natalie Cole, Greatest Hits Volume 1. Uh, yeah. I mean, just a fantastic lineup of all of her classic uh, early pop songs. I think this one goes up, uh, comes all the way up through uh, the uh, Unforgettable, where she did the classic uh, uh, remix, the duet with her late father, uh, Nat King Cole's vocals. That was a massive, massive hit. And that, I believe, is on here. Uh, but yes, uh, this will be an everlasting love. And uh, what's the other one on here? Um, Miss You Like Crazy. That was a big hit for her. And uh, yeah, I Live For Your Love. I think that was a fairly decent hit. But uh, yeah, good stuff. I really have come to appreciate Natalie Cole recently. And then we have Wilson Pickett. I didn't. I did not have any Wilson Pickett CDs until recently. Until I picked up the, picked up this one. I don't know why, and uh, I was definitely missing out. Uh, I only. I have only myself to blame for missing out on Wilson Pickett until now. Fantastic soul vocalist. Uh, I guess they they called him the Wicked Mister Pickett. There's a reason for that. Um, Yes, Soulsville, USA, six, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, classic song, Land of a Thousand Dances, uh, in the Midnight Hour. I mean, you forget how many big hits the guy had until you look at the track listings for, uh, for some of these. Uh, but yeah, lots of great songs on that one. And this one I have not listened to yet. Uh, but yes, when I saw this one, I just had to have it. I had to give a shot with this artist, because I've heard a lot of great things about her. Sister Rosetta Tharp. Uh, Sing, Sister Sing is the name of this compilation. And uh, yeah, I cannot wait to uh, dig into this one. I, um, as, I, as I understand it, she did just as much secular uh, blues stuff as she did gospel stuff. So, uh, and I, I'm developing some tolerance. A particular uh, regular viewer of mine will kind of get a chuckle out of my using the word tolerance uh, for gospel songs uh, of late. I've kind of, uh, you know, I'm not a religious person, so the lyrical content itself is kind of lost on me, but I appreciate, I've come to appreciate the the feeling and the soul behind the singing in gospel. That's just something that you, you really can't, uh, 
you can't read about it. You have to listen to it to really appreciate it. So I cannot wait to delve into Sister Rosetta. Uh, really looking forward to listening to that one. And then we've got a, a classic album, uh, Aretha Franklin. I never loved, uh, I never loved a man the way I love you. A one, I think this was her Atlantic Records debut. Uh, some great, great stuff on here. Yes, this was in the thrift stores for ninety nine cents. Can you believe it? But yeah, lots of fantastic, fantastic stuff on here, and a uh, couple other ones like that. A uh, couple of little scratches on some of these CDs, but you know, for ninety nine cents, they look co totally playable. So I don't, I don't expect them to not play. Stevie Wonder talking book. I know, right? Ninety nine cents, ninety nine freaking cents. Uh, but yeah, I mean, yeah, you don't really, you don't really need to see the track listing for that one. You know what it is, and Stevie Nicks Belladonna. Uh, I, I, I really hit the thrift stores just right that uh, one time, apparently. So, uh, yeah, great, great uh, selections on there. Then we've got some other stuff like. Uh, Adam Lambert, Glam Nation Live. Uh, never, I, I mean, I saw this one back in the day, never picked it up. Just uh, live albums have never really been my thing. But I thought, for 99 cents, I'll give this one a try. And I believe this one also comes with a DVD. So it'll be kind of fun to watch an Adam Lambert concert and not just listen to it. So, uh, so uh, yeah, I think you've got the CD here and the DVD. So, yeah. Looking forward to uh, giving that one a good listen. I've got his first two albums, which I believe this one covers. I don't know if this one covers stuff from his second album or just from his first album. But anyway, And then here we have another uh, New Age CD that I had had years ago, got rid of. And actually, actually, did I ever have this one? I Maybe I didn't ever have this one. But uh, Peter Monu or Monu, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. M-A-U-N-U -U is how you spell his last name. Uh, but yeah, Warm Sound in a Gray Field. Uh, there's at least one song off of here that I had heard and really, really loved for many, many years. Uh, the Whirling Dervish is the name of that of the song off of this album. Uh, play that one. It's, it's really fun. It's really kind of fun. Uh, but yeah, had to pick that one up. Uh, yes, I was a big fan of the Narada uh, family of labels back in the day, kind of like I was with Private Music, which is the label that uh, Jerry Goodman was on. Uh, so yes, kind of uh, when I was in my big in my new age phase back in the early 90s. I uh, was very fond of those labels. Then we have uh, actually another local uh, talent or regional talent. Uh, sh I should have put this one alongside uh, Tom Grant because this guy is also kind of jazz-ish. Mason Williams. This is a uh, compilation called Music, uh, 1968 to 1971. So yes, stuff off of his first few albums. Uh, which I think I, I I think I have all this all the albums that this pulls from I have on vinyl, but still, you know, to have a compilation on CD, why not? Uh, no, so a, a very talented guy. He is much more than just classical gas, uh, as, as great a song as that is. And uh, then we have another jazz contemporary jazz smooth jazz artist, Dave Cause. Um, I had his first have his first. Three albums. I think this is his fourth, or maybe I have four and this is his fifth. I can't remember. But uh, another one I used to have a long time ago, scaled back on his discography, and several years later, I am back where I started. So I tell you that the record and CD stores love me because I keep getting rid of CDs and then rebuying them. Uh, so yeah, a great saxophonist. Uh, if, if you have not heard Dave Cause's work, it's just wonderful. And then we have another, um, no, this isn't really jazz. Uh, it's kind of classical, I guess. Uh, the Canadian Brass. They're from Canada. Who'd have thunk it, right? Anyway, uh, and as you can kind of tell by the title and the artwork, uh, All You Need Is Love, this is a an album full of Beatles covers. Uh, not as excellent as I thought it was going to be. Uh, he, they depart a little bit from the arrangements on some of them, but still, this is a lots of fun to listen to. And I will definitely be hanging on to this CD for quite a while. But uh, yeah, that was looked too interesting to pa to pass up at the uh, the thrift store. Then we have you guys might have seen this one before. Uh, this is the Commodores, the 
Best of Millennium Collection. I had this one before, but the CD was not in very good shape. It was playable, but it was the it looked really kind of dicey and sketchy. So I decided to get this one. Was this one still sealed? I don't know if it was still sealed, but the disc is absolutely perfect condition. But yeah, uh, all of their their classic, their their biggest hits are here on this CD. So yeah, was definitely worth picking that one up again, especially for ninety nine freaking cents. And then two more here in this uh, haul video. Have not listened to this yet. I um, not not familiar with the guy until I picked it up. But look at that album cover. Isn't that the coolest cover in the world? I just love it. Yes, the cover basically uh, suckered me into buying it. Ramsey Lewis, uh, he is obviously a pianist, as you can tell by the uh, uh, picture there. So, yeah. So, it's looking forward to uh, listening to this and checking out Ramsey Lewis for the first time. I have never been disappointed with uh, a GRP. Well, actually, I guess once I was, uh, just because it wasn't what I was expecting. Um, GRP album before, so I expect uh, good things to come from that. And the final CD here, uh, this is Pink Martini, a retrospective. So this is a compilation by the very hard to describe or, or hard to categorize uh, pop group Pink Martini. They do their songs in like a dozen different languages. They have all sorts of different styles in their songs. You know, some uh, kind of loungy type stuff, some uh, pop, some world music, some, you know, Baroque. I mean, just, you, you name the style, they cover it, you know, except for, you know, like the uh, current contemporary genres like uh, rock and uh, metal and that kind of stuff. They don't do that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, I figured I had to pick this one up. This was, uh, I think it was four ninety five. So it was a little more expensive, but it was still sealed, and uh, it was it's in the obviously as you can see the a hardbound book um, sort of a thing, and I think it's fairly um, fairly rare uh, to come across that uh, certainly sealed anyway. So yeah, that is it. That catches you guys up on my hauls for uh, going two months without doing a video, uh, but yes, I, I think I'm going to make up for it uh, in the next few weeks with, uh, yes, this is the second of two videos I'm recording today, and I will, I hope to be recording another video next weekend, and so for the next month or so, you should have a fairly, fairly decent, decent stream of content. So anyway, that'll do it for this video. Be sure to like it if you liked it. And before you go, drop me some feedback in the comments section. I'd love to know what you think. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell icon to catch my future videos, and hit my username to browse my old videos. Links to my socials and my favorite fellow YouTubers are in the description below. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob.